I'm Kelly Harrell, author, animist, and creator of the Weekly Rune. Solenton Arts is my soul-tending practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, actionable animism, soul-tending, and how all of those intersect through sacred activism on my path. The Weekly Rune is out, and if you're not sure what it is, it's a rune cast that I've done for years, focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. The Weekly Rune is now available in full on Patreon.com. Just do a search for Kelly Harrell to find it, and you can find the archive of all past rune casts on my site, soulintentarts.com. If you're not sure what a half-month is or what the runic calendar is, Listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the weekly rune. It's explained fully at the beginning of every runecast. Thank you to everyone who listens to the podcast, to those who send notes and share their experiences of the runes. That's what it's all about, and I'm grateful for the engagement. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters who make the sharing of my rune work through the podcast and the RuneCast possible with their financial support. If you've benefited from the RuneCast, the podcast, or the ton of free articles on the runes, animism, and soul tending on my website, you can show your support through buying my books, which you can find at soulintentarts.com or Amazon, by making a one-time contribution through PayPal or Square, or by contributing regularly through Patreon. Just go to patreon.com and search for Kelly Harrell. You can also subscribe to the paid version of the Weekly Rune there, and thank you for it. The Southern Hemisphere is approaching winter solstice, while the North approaches summer solstice this Saturday. Wherever you are, however you're looking at the sun, it's all intense and challenging right now. It is every year, which... I'm sure you've read in the weekly rune and you know it from your own experience. You feel it coming. The Degas half month affirmation from runic book of days is under the brightest light is truth shadowed only by my protection. Knowing my darkness is just as divine. When she leads with the affirmation, it's about to get real, right? This time of year, I usually talk about the point where extremes meet and the hot seat that it puts us all in, individually and collectively, how we're going to have to work our skills to cope with what it brings up, to learn from it, and to change ourselves so that our lives change around that learning. This year is different, though. We're experiencing dire extremes at the same time. Literally all of us are experiencing dire extremes all in the same span of time and we're experiencing many of the same extremes at once. I mean, have you looked at how many planets are retrograde right now? And when I'm talking about like general depths of compassion and hatred being in the same space, I'm also talking in specificity like how Communities can pull together and radically improve all our quality of life while the same communities kill, deny, and destroy other folks' lives. Dial it in even more. We're sitting with our own hatred and bias while moving into what tending those biases looks like, how tending them affects other people, and learning how to reflect that tending through our actions. It isn't that... These things just blew in with this season or that other solstices weren't about these things. There's nothing new here, especially for marginalized groups. It's that we had to be standing right here where we are with both feet firmly planted to embody all of it at once now. Through the lenses of social justice reform and pandemic responsibilities, all the extremes are more sharply in focus to people who didn't see them or weren't touched by them. I've talked about this in uh, a couple of Instagram, what do you call them? They're TV things. And um, 
sort of in the the full version of the weekly rune, but but for months I've been getting questions about why folks' rituals aren't working. Their spiritual rituals, the things that they do to you know stay connected and active in their cosmologies, and I'm questions about you know how they can better tend their energetic hygiene because their emotional states are out the roof, if not uncontrollable. And these are questions that I'm getting right alongside, um, you know, what are the spiritual implications of people refusing to wear masks or stay home or to recognize other folks' basic human rights? And the thing is, the answer for each of those things is the exact same one. It comes down to an unwillingness to experience discomfort. We lack skills in tending long-term discomfort. And as a result of that, we've let many people's needs be unmet far too long. Because we didn't cultivate strong emotional literacy and responses, we've not matured into the eldered, wise adults that human life on this planet demands. Instead, we've used our spiritual practices, and I mean literally our actual personal rituals and our practices in that how we engage other people to uh, uh, impart uh, spiritual skills or to teach. We've used our spiritual practices to support our bypassing of all the aforementioned. If there's a reason that I dislike plug and play rituals and gloss over love and light, happy place bullshit, it's because those contrived invitations to spirituality don't allow you to cultivate the emotional literacy or spiritual responsibility of embodiment. I know they're starting places for some folks, but the job isn't to stay at the starting place. It's to end up at your unique finish line, whatever that is. Rote rituals and energy hygiene don't force you to be the soul of where you stand. They don't center your community over your personal freedoms and philosophical platitudes. And for the bajillionth time, that is animism. And animism is hard. It's uncomfortable. And you will not often win. Whatever the situation is, you will not often win and you won't even understand why you lost because animism doesn't center the human viewpoint. It will hurt and you will feel it and you will have to grieve the loss. But because you're embodied and because you are centering community, you won't get fucking sucked into caring about losing. You'll have the skills to deal with the discomfort and you will move on on. And guess what? Moving on will suck too. But that's what the cultivation of long-term skills for discomfort looks like. Nothing in our culture taught us any of that. It didn't teach us the compassion to see all people, let alone create and sustain emotional and energetic space to change how we see and to facilitate getting other people seen. It didn't teach us that eldering well means you lose certain privileges. If you really want to include everyone in the benefits of our culture, you have to share. You have to grow up. It didn't teach us that communal tending is more important than personal freedoms. Every one of those things that I just said comes down to base coping skills with long-term discomfort and we are a population of adults who can't do it not right now anyway we can stop at just that and say the reason we're like that is because we're selfish we can say that's why people don't wear masks that's why people don't care about other people's basic human rights but the more nuanced reason is that our culture has let those of us who are privileged get away with thinking we don't have to have self-soothing skills. We don't have to regulate our own discomfort because we can always sacrifice somebody else's peace and comfort to save our own. That is what we've been taught at the end of the day. And you know what I'm going to say next. That lack of these coping skills for discomfort is not an oversight. 
It is intentional. It is intentional to keep marginalized people down and to keep you stupid. We're not just not supported in lacking these skills, but we are actively stopped from cultivating them. And the vicious cycle of that is when we don't cultivate those visceral emotional stability skills and compassion that goes with them, we don't develop the critical thinking that causes us to say, hey, so-and-so doesn't seem to be included in this. Divine catalyst Joel Adifon says the infinite dwells in the union of opposites and integration of polarity beyond the confines of binary. Can we just pause on that and say how brilliant it is? That means our time with Degas is about realizing these extremes in their full beingness. What makes them different, what unites them, is all embodied in the same sacred space. It is not separated out. It isn't possible to separate it out. We can't parse out what we want and what we don't. And when we run up against the hard things that we can't parse out and don't have the skills to sit with, that means it's time to learn. Degas means day. And the action it challenges us all to do is find meaning in the bite-sized ways we engage the world every day. Because those bite-sized engagements are fractals of every big system that exists. I know wherever you are, you're in the thick of hard things. I know your rituals are all screwed up. Parts of your cosmology have their back to you and tried and true is just not working out. I know you're feeling the crush of extremes colliding and that you feel the personal and collective emotional toll of that. But you can change that. You can work your skills to cope with what it all brings up. You can learn from it and you can change yourself and your life around that learning. We talk in soul tending communities a lot about initiation. Elderhood and the responsibilities that it demands is the one initiation that assuming we live long enough falls to every one of us. We're there. It's time. An entire culture, an entire planet right now. It's time to grow up. It's time to be your communal self. Thanks for listening. If you have questions or insights about working with the runes in season, or you just want somebody to bounce your ideas off, feel free to email me at kelly, that's K-E-L-L-E-Y, at soulintentarts.com, or you can call into the Anchor app, which you can download for Android or iPhone. Also, check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and various other podcast platforms. And you can learn more about me, Runic Book of Days, and my work by visiting soulintentarts.com or on Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird.